Hi everybody. All right, so today I invite you to reflect on what is the metaphor that you see about your life? What is the story, the overarching story or, well, metaphor or analogy, whichever one you understand, to be what this life's journey is about? And I'll give you a couple of the ones that resonate with me. Um, but again, let me, before I tell you what my ideas are, I invite you to reflect on your own. When you think about the journey of your life, um, how you see the story, um, hopefully it's one that is hopeful and uplifting and ultimately uplifting. Of course, your life has many ups and downs. Um, but do you have a overarching story or metaphor analogy that you that you perceive to be true about life life as a whole or just your life and i invite you to pause this recording if you want to and and comment below if you have anything that comes to you right away because i'm going to share with you my, my my thoughts here now okay so as you have probably heard me talk about um the idea of soul gym I'm going to give you three, actually, um, three, and then I'm curious if any of these three uh, resonate with you um, a lot, or if there's something else. Um, so before I go to the Soul Gym, I'll, I'll say a very common one is Earth School, right? Earth School is this idea that the soul has is participating in, um, in has enrolled in a very advanced and complex school called earth where we planned certain lessons to be learned certain classes to be taken uh the problem of course is we don't remember doing that <laughs> we most of us don't remember our pre or pre-birth planning process and say okay uh, I'm going to learn about, um, I'm going to have to learn self-compassion. I'm going to have to learn um, self-confidence. I'm going to, I would, li I would like to learn what it's like to um, recover from this trauma. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, you probably planned it. I'm sorry to say, but, or at least it was uh, acceptable for your soul and your spirit guides to say, no, it's okay for you to go through that because you're going to have to learn this, you're going to have to learn that. You, you get to, you get to, because just like any advanced and very, um, uh, very excellent school, it is, it is, um, it, it's not easy to get in, right? Like this earth school idea, if those who have looked into this and believed this and um, looked at the spiritual literature around it, suggests that, it's not easy to get into earth school or like a lot of souls uh, aspire to experience earth school um, and that there's there's kind of either a line like a waiting period to get in like oh you got to apply and you got to you got to be accepted into earth school or be ready for it anyway or it's like something that is so hard Earth school is so challenging, so advanced that um, you you really have to be to, to be ready. And many school many souls are not ready for this, or are not are, are not up for it. Or they, they, they feel it's ah it's too challenging, it's too too hard, it's too hard. Okay, so Earth school is a, a wonderful metaphor because we most of us have been through professional or uh, formal schooling whether it's elementary school and we know that going to school can be traumatic <laughs> for sure it can also be fun right it could all like if you find if you find a way to enjoy learning right if you find a way to also make friends with others at school then school can be exhilarating. It can be enjoyable, even though there are difficult assignments and, and difficult tests, just like in this earth school. You can figure out a way to enjoy the lessons you're learning in life, to say, ah, 
ah, this is, uh, this is yet another moment where I have to practice not being angry and like step outside of your limited ego to see yourself getting angry or getting sad or getting confused and frustrated or whatever and go, oh, this is one of those opportunities for learning. Ah, I, 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 see, I see what's happening. This is one of the lessons or this is one of the tests. I'm going to use this test to practice you know, whatever it might be, compassion or patience or you know, love or forgiveness or whatever it may be. Ah, okay. Oh, I just grew. I just, you know, so earth school is very useful. And um, just like, you know, and, and also teachers, right? The school has teachers and you kind of see, uh, hmm, what are my teachers in earth school? You know, what are the experiences I had that really were teachers, are teachers for me, for my soul? And also, what are the teachers in other human beings or non-human beings? I, I often think my cat is one of my spiritual teachers. <laughs> Uh, my dog as well, but probably more my cat is <laughs> my spiritual teacher, teaching me you know, uh, certain lessons of patience and, and uh, compassion and um, uh, stretching my understanding of, of, of the non-human world, etc. Um, so anyway, what, what do you think about this earth school analogy, uh, analogy metaphor, whichever one you want to say? Um, I, think it's, I think it's quite useful. And just like school, you graduate, right? And you don't stay in school forever. I know some people keep getting degree after degree, but most of us, <laughs> anyway, typically, you stay in school for a few years, you graduate. There is a celebration of graduation. I, I really hope that that is what happens when I physically die in this earth school, uh, that I get, that my life gets celebrated to say, ah, George learned so many lessons and uh, he did so many things in the school. And, um, and, and then you go on to the next level, right? The next, you know, living real life or the next schooling uh, at a uh, level. Um, so that's, that's appropriate, I think, for, for understanding the soul as well. Okay, so that's one analogy. Another popular analogy, especially these days, is that life is a video game. By the way, I, I resonate deeply with all these analogies. I think these are all useful to me at certain parts of my life, and I, I still come back to them occasionally. So life as a video game. This is Earth game. This is a multi, massively multiplayer online role-playing game called Earth. And it is where our avatars, our souls, are the, the, you know, player one. And it is, um, you know, it is say, strapped on this Earth body suit or the simulation suit to play this video game. And uh, I, 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 um, I, I interviewed uh, a, a spiritual author named Christian Sundberg. You can find it on my channel, on my, on my YouTube channel, Christian Sundberg, S-U-N-D-B-E-R-G, uh, an interview with him. And we talked about this, this analogy of life as a, as a video game and how just like a video game has, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the hero in the video game begins relatively uh, undeveloped, right? Because like the, the hero can, can, can grow in strength and agility and um, superpowers, right? Like learn how to use their superpowers and, and gather, you know, uh, swords and other weapons along the way to battle monsters. What are the monsters in, in life in this Earth video game? Well, the monsters, the villains are, are the um, not other people and not other beings. The villains are actually our own darkness. Um, our, our, you could say our, our weaknesses or our opportunities to grow. That's our villains. We have to overcome the, the big bad boss of lack of self-compassion or lack of compassion for others or um, you know, being too reactive or, or whatever it may be. Like that's, the, that's what we're developing our, our skills to to overcome, to overcome, um, over being overly prideful, or overly overly humble, you know, or being um, overly indulgent, or being overly strict, you know, like like these are the these are the villains. These are these are the uh, the tests within the game to to strengthen the character, um, and and if, just like a video game, we have we have allies that come along the way to. Uh, to support us and those allies are human allies sometimes non-human allies spiritual allies and uh, and, and and we also 
get tools. And the tools could be books that we read or videos we watch, articles we read. Tools can be practices that we do. So I think the video game metaphor is really brilliant. And it's also, you know, again, similar idea that a lot of people, a lot of souls um, are, are wishing they could play this very hard game. Earth is a very, very challenging game. It's very immersive. It's very intense. The souls are, are often forget that they're playing a game. I still, even though I believe in this, these metaphors, I often forget that I'm playing the game and I get caught up in certain emotions and experiences um, and uh, forget the bigger picture, right? And just like a video game, you know, the video game, you can die in the video game, uh, you know, accidentally jump into a chasm <laughs> or get killed by one of your, uh, one of the villains or big, big bad monsters and you can die, the character can die. And just like a video game, you take off the headset and go, oh, wow, that was such an intense game. Here's, I really enjoyed this part of it. That was a really, really hard part. I, I, I didn't enjoy that part at all. It was so, so challenging. And I really learned about this and learned about that. And I made, I had some fun with some of my soul friends, my player friends. You know, we, we played some, some parts of the game together. And, uh, and then now I can see what real life is again. I remember that I was actually safe all along the way, even though the game looked like I was getting hurt and getting slashed and damaged. I was actually safe and uh, I'm safe again. And I can play again. I can play this game. Perhaps, I don't know if we can play Earth game again. Perhaps people say reincarnation. So, you know, might be able to play this Earth game or play another game. So I think that's a really apt metaphor as well. And um, OK, a third metaphor that I've been using for a while is the soul gym. Earth being, this life being a gymnasium for the soul. And, you know, you can see what the analogy is. The soul is here to grow. Use various, uh, you know, exercises and, and, and weights. Weights, we literally put on burdens and weights. Uh, some of us have the burden of having some kind of physical dis disability, so-called. Um, that's a big weight. Or some of us put on the weight of having a very traumatic childhood. Big weight. Some of us have the weight of... Um, getting into bad, you know, pre-planned, getting into bad relationships, you know, big, big weight, right? Um, and some of us have the weight of having sudden health problem uh, in our adult years. Um, suddenly it came, but maybe it was genetic or maybe it was developed because of our bad habits. But, but, but that's a weight for us to, to learn from, to grow our spiritual muscles, spiritual muscles of patience, of compassion, self-compassion, forgiveness, of courage, of joy, all along the way. Um, and just like in a gym, we have personal trainers. Right? And personal trainers can be teachers that we learn from, can be um, partners, uh, friends, uh, can be our spiritual guides if we are in touch with, with that energy. Um, so soul gym, I think it's very useful. Just like, just like you spend an afternoon in the gym, it seems so short compared to the rest of your life. I think I like that metaphor too of like, this is just an afternoon. This might, you know, 80 years of the human life might seem really, really long. You know, well, the, the older you get, the realize, you realize how short it was, right? All along, it was so short. Um, but the younger you are, the, lo the longer it feels, right? Uh, oh my God, how, what, you know? And, and so just like an afternoon in the gym, this life is so short compared to the eternity of our soul and um and and we should we can then look therefore look at the problems and challenges as weights that are helping us grow our muscles and how are we going to exercise to grow our muscles okay finally um the metaphor i've been using recently is the life monastery the life monastery and this is deeply meaningful for me not because i've been in a monastery i don't know maybe i feel like maybe in some past life i've been a monk probably i uh, for those of us who believe in reincarnation and, and living past lives and if some of us believe we've lived hundreds or thousands of past lives here on earth you probably if you've lived hundreds of past lives you've probably been a monk okay or a nun or in some kind of religious thing uh just be just chances are right um so I feel like I've probably been a monk before because I really resonate with this idea of life monastery. Even though in this life, I've, I've visited a monastery before. 
I've been on a, a silent meditation retreat for 10 days, the Pasana retreat before. Um, I really, I really hated it, by the way. I really hated the, the 10 day Vipassana retreat. Sorry if some of you, life changing was amazing. My friends thought it was life changing and amazing. That's why I went and I really, really wasn't for me. But somehow still, this idea of the life monastery really resonates with me. And the idea is that um, every single day, uh, well, the idea is I get, I'm the one who gets to design the monastery program for my own life. You get to design the monastery program for your own life. And I, the reason why I love it is because I see every, every single day as like another day in the monastery. And just like, a, just like in the monastery, there are disciplines. I think that's why I resonate with it because I'm trying to practice more discipline in my life. Like, you know, monks and nuns, they, they, they have to get up at a certain hour. They clean, they cook. They, um, you know, have to maybe do certain things like maybe some of them work at a gift shop or some of them work at farming, right? Like some monasteries are working monasteries. So that's how I see this life as well. And I love that because that's what life is. You, you have to get up at a certain time. I mean, if you want to be healthy and balanced, you got to get up at a certain time. You got to cook and clean and, and uh, you know, take care of chores and, and uh, work and all that. But in a monastery, they do it all and obviously they also do spiritual practice throughout the day which i love that idea like they they don't just cook clean and farm but they do spiritual practices throughout the entire day and they also they also see every act of cooking cleaning and work as a spiritual practice as like you layer on top of every single activity a spiritual intention and perspective and seeing every breath as a spiritual practice i love that i i so resonate and and i'm continually forgetting that i'm in a life monastery which is why the analogy resonates with me right now because i'm trying to practice remembering throughout the entire day ah this is part of my my spiritual practice here. I mean, I'm typing. I'm typing an email. Spiritual practice. I'm, you know, cleaning my toilet. Spiritual practice. I'm, uh, you know, um, cleaning my dog. Spiritual practice. <laughs> Whatever. Right. Hanging out with my wife. Spiritual practice. Right. Um, my, my my wife would say the opposite. Hanging out with you is a spiritual practice, George. <laughs> All right. So, um, so for me, it's this constant reminder that life is this life is work right and um this the, the analogy if we if we if we take on an analogy then it can be a mantra for us as a constant reminder whether it's earth school you know earth game uh soul gym uh, life monastery or whatever m mantra you can use to keep reminding us of ah perspective stepping outside again you know stepping outside again um, and telling the story again of what's going on in your life and how that relates to the larger story. And so to me, a life monastery means life is constant work. Like this life, like my, one of my metaphors is not life is a vacation. No, this is, this is not the vacation. The vacation is after we die, after we, our soul pops out of our body and we're resting in the spiritual world, the eternal world, that's vacation. That's when we have unlimited, you know, love and peace and unlimited creativity, unlimited pleasures, unlimited delight, no danger at all, no feeling of danger. That's vacation. This is not vacation. This is work. We came here to work. We came here to, to, to be tested, to grow, to be challenged. And yes, we have moments of rest here. We have moments of pleasure here. But those moments are a temporary rest and encouragement to then face the next moment of work the next moment of challenge sometimes even during a vacation you get challenged right like you surprisingly i thought i was on a break here and i was i thought i was resting and, and taking a trip and having fun here and suddenly i get challenged right so even during vacations here you get challenged we remind you again that life is constant work and the rest and vacations are simply a temporary uh, strengthening uh, a way to renew yourself for the next moment of work could be the very next moment right even on vacation right even in retirement right 
So joyful productivity, returning to it again and again and again. Joyful productivity is another one of my mantras. So this is why I do this video every Sunday, to constantly remind myself of the bigger picture and hopefully to encourage you to reflect on that as well. So I hope this is helpful. Thank you for, um, thank you for watching. And uh, I look forward to seeing any comments you want to share below. Thanks.